Welcome to Celebrity Liar. My name is Andrew Hill Newman, and check it out. It's time to chime in with the cheering for your charming chat jockey, Louise Rowe. Oh, thank you, Andy. <laughs> New alliteration. I, yeah, I'm so excited. I feel like tonight's show is going to be so sizzling that it's just ooh, ooh. It's, hot. It's, it's, it's so hot. How good is that joke? Is this going to be the best joke ever on it is, internet TV? It is. Uh, yes, and you There's know... There's also even like some some sort of crusty cheese on there. Yes, it's real, <laughs> the real oven mitt. By the way, this crusty cheese is brought to you by The Single Chef, which is here on what, Thursdays? Turn it into yeah. a promo yeah. moment, Andy. I like that. Mondays, Mondays, yes. Uh, absolutely. You know, uh, The Single Chef is a great show, but on this show, the game we play is really simple. Two celebrities oh. are going to tell you the exact same story as if it happened to them, but in truth, it only happened to one Can of them. Can you put it on, please, while you tell this? It is going to be up to you to decide <gasps> who's, who's the, the liar. liar. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you can. This is live. This is real. Yeah, that's funny. I'm a puppet. Um, I've got my computer right here, and you can log on to theroomlive.com, ask me questions that are relevant to the stories that our guests are telling, because often you guys don't get the point. You just want to have a chat, tell me a joke, or just be rude, which is fine and dandy, but really we want to catch them out so that we can figure out who's the liar. Yes. And exactly. then you can vote. Yes. And Louise will announce the vote. And if you're still watching on the front page of theroomlive.com, uh, click on that white bar right down there that says chat and view larger and it'll bring you to a page where you can see a larger version of the screen yeah, it's and not lying. chat and that's where you also vote. Yeah. Should we meet these yeah, lovely we should. fellas? Uh, let me tell you Louise, you know that I am old enough to remember when the coolest show on cable TV was a naked public access talk show on Channel J in New York City. Yet today, no. cable <laughs> is home to some of the greatest programming on all of television, including TNT's The Closer, which oh. is continuously one of the most successful and critically acclaimed shows on any kind of TV. And tonight, we are lucky enough <laughs> to have two of the cast members of that show. Please yeah. give it up yeah. for John Tenney and Tony Dennison. <laughs> Hey, you that show. Down. You were going down. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that show was Robin Bird. Was it Robin Bird? Yes, it was, actually. Robin Bird on We Channel all Day thought Leo. that, but you said it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are those available on DVD? Do you know? No, I have no idea. Do you know what's really, um, really strange? I'm such a child of the 70s that I even get paranoid around guys who play cops. Oh, really? This is, this is, it's, You're not carrying, are you? I, I didn't think it was a great joke, but I, uh, anyway, <laughs> right, I good. stuck with it. So you've got to admire my tenacity. Uh, you guys know how the game is played. Uh, before we went on, these guys were over there swapping stories, personal stories, and we have represented them all right here. I have a question. Sure. Why does he have two bottles of water and I only have one? This is not my bottle. This uh -oh. is my bottle. Oh, I see. Okay. That's yours. That's his. This is mine. Anything you liar. else. Liar. <laughs> uh, the stories are represented Why here. Uh, they've drawn to see who goes first randomly. Uh, John won that, so he's going to go first for the first round. Tony will go first second time. I'm going to reach deep within. I'm going to uh -huh. pull one out. We're going to put two minutes on the clock. And John, you will begin okay. by telling us a story that we call Knock yourself out. It's funny you should pick that because this did actually happen to me. Oh. Um, so, <laughs> I, I, yes, I was, uh, I was in college and uh, I had this really important exam. It was actually a philosophy exam and I'd been studying for this thing for about two days. I'd been pulling all nighters. I had to, there was a paper involved with it. So I'm up all night and, uh, and I'm, I'm getting more and more tired, more and more tired. And finally, it gets close to the exam time and I'm, I get into this situation where I have a choice. I could either 
get an hour's worth of sleep or I can go to the exam without anything and just drink a bunch of coffee. And I'm like, you know, usually if I just take one hour of sleep, then I'm going to feel really groggy when I get up, so I should probably just muscle through. But I was just so exhausted. I said, all right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the hour of sleep. So now I was in my dorm room, and I have my bed. It's, off the, it's, it's on the floor. It's just a mattress. And there's a desk next to it, which I use as my night table. So I say, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to set the alarm. I'm going to reach up. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to fall back asleep. So to prevent myself from doing that, I took all these books and I stacked them around the alarm clock, figuring I'll have to rifle through some stuff before I turn it off so I'm, I'll wake up and I won't fall back asleep. So I pass out instantly, and sure enough, the alarm goes off. I reach up to turn it off, and I feel this stuff. And I'm like, what the hell is this? I don't, even, I, I don't even remember this. So I sit up to look at what's surrounding my alarm clock, and I smack my head on the side of the desk, and I knock myself out unconscious. <laughs> And, and I wake up four hours later <laughs> with a huge welt on my head with a splitting headache and I go running over, you know, completely slept through the exam, go running over to the professor who's actually there gathering up papers, exams all over, and he sees this gigantic welt on my head and he says, uh, look, nobody, nobody in their right mind could, you know, do that to get out of exam. He had a little sympathy for me and he actually let me take the exam. But I did actually knock myself out wow. unconscious. Wow. Uh, and uh, with five seconds to spare, seconds well to told, <laughs> sir. Uh, interesting. I have questions, but they'll wait until after we hear Tony's version of this. Tony, I you understand. You mean the real version? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good, John. Pretty good. Anyway, uh, let me see. Um, can you go back? Wait, I was talking to That's him. That's okay. Yeah, look, we're giving you the extra second. Okay. So anyway, so <laughs> everything he said in the beginning is actually was pretty accurate. I was studying for an exam, and I had been up for two days straight. Uh, and the exam was that day, and I decided, look, I need some sleep. And then if I don't sleep, I'm going to be at the exam. I might pass out. Just that one hour I thought might be enough. So since I'm notorious, I mean, for you know, being a heavy sleeper, I once fell asleep standing up waiting on line for a movie. So I thought, <laughs> okay. So what I did was I moved my desk into the corner of the room, and then I put the bureau on top of the desk, and I put this little night table on top of that, and I put the alarm clock at the top. And so that when the alarm went off, I would have to get up, I would have to get up, climb up top, the top of the desk, and then go up and sh shut the alarm. And then hopefully in the process, I would be more awake. So I fell asleep for the hour. Sure enough, the, the alarm is ringing. I get up to go on top of the desk, but because I'm so groggy, I slip off the desk, knock the bureau and the tape, night table off, and it, as that falls off, I go to stop it, and then I fell and knocked myself out on the floor. So when I get up, like, which I think was about like maybe four hours later, maybe it was five hours later, I get up and I've got this gigantic wallop, you know, on my head. And I said, I, I, let me, I, I gotta do something. Maybe I'll, I'll go there and, you know, see if I'll get some pity from this professor. And when I went to go out, I realized that the night table had knocked the doorknob off, the door. <laughs> so I couldn't, get out of the, I couldn't get out of my dorm room. So what I did was I tied some sheets together and I climbed down the two stories from the dorm room. Thank God it was two stories. I, got, I ran across the campus with this big knot on my head. And I don't even think I changed from my, my, my pajamas. I think I had my pajama bottoms on. And I ran over to, the, to the, the, the faculty tower building. And the test had already been over. Everybody had already gone home. And I walked in and I, <laughs> the guy looked at me. <laughs> my professor looked at me and he was like, you know, what happened? And then when I told him, he said, nobody can make up a story like that. So he gave me an opportunity to take the test again. Wow. Uh, both of you within the time limit. Well told. Uh, I have not uh, yet decided who I think is full of it. If you know who the liar is, you can go ahead and vote now. But you also have a chance to ask questions of uh, Tony and John. Pass them on in the chat room to Louise and she'll ask. But first, I'm going to begin with you, John. Uh, what college was this that you went to? Uh, Vassar College. Vassar College. Yeah. college. And how about you? What college were you State going to? State University of New York at New Paltz, which New was New about Paltz. 10 miles away from Vassar. I, I have uh, hitchhiked through uh, SUNY New Paltz. Uh, no roommate? No, no, no. This was in, uh, this was my senior year. This was I had a single, you know. I just was uh, my own my own. As a senior, you get to actually have your own single room. I don't have any sharing. With sure. You. And how about you? You have a roommate at this time? No, I didn't have a roommate. I don't. You know. <laughs> Nobody guess... wanted a roommate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I didn't have a roommate. Um, it's funny. I didn't. You know, there, no, were, two, there were two beds in there, but I just. It's allowed. <laughs> it makes it slightly less plausible, but you know. Uh, <laughs> let me ask you, John. Uh, do you remember what class this was uh, that you were studying for? It was a philosophy class. A philosophy. Class. David Lachterman was a professor. 
fantastic professor, brilliant guy, and it was a, yeah, it was a philosopher. How about you? Why well, was Religions of the World by Amaya Chakravarti, who was the assistant actually to Mahatma Gandhi, and he had settled. He was the one set, settling the the, pro, the the war that was going on in Bangladesh at the time. And I really liked the guy. He was a little tiny wisp, <laughs> wisp of a guy, and and so that's why I think you know he had some pity on me because it was Religions of the World. So of course Gandhi had a personal. No, it wasn't Gandhi. It was uh, Maya no, Chakravarti. Uh, Louise, are there any questions uh, from the chat room? Loads. Well done, guys. You were listening. Um, a, a book knocked you out. It's going to be a bloody heavy book. No, no, see, it wasn't actually the book. I had stacked books around the alarm clock. The alarm <laughs> clock was sitting on a desk, which I used as a night table. My bed was just mattress on the floor. Yeah, but you said the books so. fell and hit no, no, your head. No, no, I, no, no, I said I stacked the books around the alarm clock, so I'd have to rifle through stuff to turn it off. That's because his I version is not I true. Sat, <laughs> no, I'm on, look, <laughs> picture this. I'm on the mattress, on the floor. The desk is here, the mattress is lower, the alarm clock's on top of the desk, I have books stacked around it. I reach up to turn it off, I feel the books, and I go, what the hell is that? And I sit up to look at what oh, it is, okay, and I sorry, crack my head on the edge of the desk. I was working out. so hard concentrating on doing my computer. Uh, go ahead and vote um, if you haven't already, but Louise, what else we got? Lady Diode says, were, to both of you, were you taking sleep medication? Was it taking sleep, sleep medication? Yeah. No. Why would Did I? Did you take one? Yeah, that's actually a stupid question. That's no, I was, I was <laughs> forcing <laughs> myself I was to stay up. I was, <laughs> <tempted> <laughs> to yeah. I was tempted to take the non-sleep medication. Yeah, when to you've, got, when you've got right, one hour, yes. take the Ambien and try to cram Did that you eight pass, hours into it. <laughs> Did you pass the exam? Uh, I did. I did. You both passed. I did. With flying actually. colors. Yes, I did. Okay. Um, I did very and, well. And it. you've got a supporter, Frosty Feast, brilliant name, says, for the record, I've gotten a single with two beds in. It does happen in college. Thank He's you, not Frosty. Lying. All right. She's, back. Mm. Got you. She's got your back. She sounds like a female. I, the only person when I went to a SUNY school who had a single on our uh, floor was the RA. I'm just really? saying. Uh, but no, then again, I was only there as a freshman, and so I wasn't an upperclassman, and I hadn't seen that privilege. Uh, go ahead. We're going to take one more question well, from the chat room, but uh, vote, vote for who You know what the I reason why senior. behind it was? Because I was, in, it was in, I was in Burton Hall, which was considered like a zoo. So a lot there of time... There is no Burton Hall. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of time... <laughs> And a lot Google of times, when, when, when students came, to the, the, their parents had gotten word about the zoo, and they didn't want their kids to go in that that dorm. So there was. Well, I don't think that. I, don't, I think there was a lot of guys in that dorm. So you were such a bad influence that they. No, it's not me in particular. Uh, I mean, the dorm had that reputation. It was like a you know a party animal place. Nobody, I, I, wanted, I, I to nobody wanted to room with an narcoleptic. Here's <laughs> what I do. I don't know anybody outside of a movie that actually tied sheets together and climbed out a window. You actually did that. I did. I tied oh, yeah. it to the bed and climbed out. Two stories. Coming. How am I going to get out? I'm not going to jump. So the I bed. Can't was Jumped 25 was feet. Screwed to the floor was heavy enough that it didn't. No, fall it just through. slid over, you know, and then you mm. went down, and then that was it. All right, I just, I've decided. I just needed to get down about 10 feet so I could drop the other 15. I've decided who I think the liar is. Uh, go ahead. This is your last chance to vote for you. Who you think it is? Do you think the liar is John Tenney or the liar is Tony Dennison? And whoever wins this vote, whoever has voted the liar, will lose this round. So they don't want your vote. But I'm telling these guys that's who I think is lying this time. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Uh, so, uh, Louise, do we have a result? Yeah, we do. It's very interesting. I don't know what you guys have been saying the last few minutes, but it's flipped the vote. So really? it was one way, and now it's gone I was quite undecided. dramatically yeah, in the opposite let's see. direction. Really? 75% of you guys think that the liar is John. Ooh, I have to say 75% of you. I said I thought the liar was Tony. Uh, so, Tony, you're going to win this round, but whether you were telling the truth or lying will determine how many points you get. Please, Why would I will lie? whoever was actually lying, will the real liar please dramatically raise their hand with some sort of flourish? It's like, to tell the truth, is like... No kidding! Now, wow. this way, now, hold on. This one, wow. there, was, there was a last-minute reversal. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute! There was a last-minute reversal. What is going on with that? I had, I had a reversal, All but it was sudden, in that direction. Like, what was that reversal? Uh, what did he say in those uh, few minutes? 
I don't this know. Is a I don't setup. know. You I asked know. him some questions. I'm I thought so interested in it. Though. It's very really weird because the reversal for me went the other way, and I, I guess when you guys were picking on, on me about having a single, you know, maybe that was it. It was frosty. It seemed at a SUNY school it seemed rare. You've usurped my life. The score is presently two for Tony to zero for John, and you know they're not just playing for honor. They're oh, also. This is not going to win me a lot of dates with women. Uh, no, but I'm it, such it, a good liar. It could win you forty-two sorry. million dollars. <laughs> oh, this is bad. We're sorry, giving away Mega Bernie. Millions tickets it's, that this could be worth bad. forty-two sorry, million sorry, dollars Frosty. already in tonight's drawing. I told uh, the truth, and they thought I was a liar. Uh, being celebrities, Frosty, of course, sorry. you're going to donate a generous yet undisclosed percentage yes. of your winnings should you win forty-two million to some worthy charity. Let's find out who you're playing for now. Uh, I, me? Yes, please. I, is this a lie? Or no, no, you tell me the truth. I'm what charity have you chosen to uh, dedicate some of your winnings? I am to? dedicating uh. a good portion of my winnings to Doctors Without Borders. Uh. A very worthy charity. How about you, Tony? Uh, the Sunshine Kids. Very good. Well, two worthy charities. I hope both tickets win. Uh, but uh, more importantly, it's time to move on to round two. Tony, you're going to go first this time. Okay. I'm going to reach deep within the bowl of stories. <sighs> Louise, are you ready? Yes. Yeah, I'm ready. Right. <laughs> All right, this one Ask is called Dying to Go to Mexico. Oh. Dying to oh. Go to Mexico. Oh, oh God, I God. remember this like it was yesterday. <laughs> I'm not proud of this story. But anyway, <laughs> when I was in college, another college situation, and, you know, I paid my own way through school, and I needed, you know, extra money. And there were these people I knew that were sort of, you know, sort of, they weren't like, you know, gangsters, but they knew people that, you know, did illegal things. And so me and this guy, Woody, who was a friend of mine, uh, they asked us if we wouldn't mind, because, you know, I had a, a class three chauffeur's uh, license in my car uh, to, drive, to drive a truck. They wanted to know if we would fly down to this border town in Texas, and there would be this big truck, not, not a complete, like, you know, <laughs> semi, but close. And, and if, as long as this seal was on the back of the truck and it wasn't broken and we had the, the code numbers they were going to give us, you know, uh, we would drive this truck back to New York. Now, we asked, you know, what, what's in the truck? And it turns out it was pre-Columbian art objects, which is part of the national treasure of the country. I mean, it's like, it's like totally illegal. It's against the law. I mean, it's death death penalty for trying to smuggle them out. But it's already in Texas, apparently. So this guy, we get, we get to the house, and we're going to get a phone call, and he's going to give us the serial number, and he's on the phone with his wife. And Woody and I are standing there. And as he's talking, I, you know, I, he must have said, we're going to drive it across the border soon, and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And they're talking. <laughs> and the next thing you know, you hear gunfire in the, in the phone. And we're like, what the hell's that? And you hear, like, machine gun fire going on. And he's on the phone with his wife. And you hear him in the, ah! <laughs> and then, like, what happened? And she hangs up, you know, she's about to hang up the phone. Some guy picks up the phone, starts yelling at her in Spanish on the phone. She hangs up. And we said, well, what happened? She goes, I think they just shot my husband. And I said, well, do we still go down and get the truck? <laughs> and she says, no, no, you can't, you know. And that was it. That was the end of my trying to go smuggling pre-Columbian well, we'll order. We'll be back with more Breaking Bad right after this. <laughs> and, uh, Wow. Uh, wow. Uh, wow. Woody, where did you <laughs> uh, John, I understand hey, something similar uh, may have happened uh, to you. Let, let, let me tell you the real story. This okay. is, he is, <laughs> Woody is so for Woody. Woody. <laughs> <laughs> all right, first of all, all right, all right, no. I'm in college. Yes. True, he's in college. I've got a friend, Al Tombello is his name. <laughs> Al, if you're looking, God bless you. I love you. He's a very talented artist. But uh, he's a buddy of mine, and uh, it was spring break, and I'd been being a short order cook at the college for a while, I'd waiting tables, you're bartending, you know, make some extra money. Spring break has come up, I don't have any plans for spring break, and Al didn't have any plans, and he said, hey, listen, I got a buddy of mine uh, <coughs> who lives down in El Paso, and he, uh, he's got a job, he said, he can, we can make some extra money if you, if you want to, I thought we could take a little road trip, go down to El Paso, or uh, we could either drive down there if you want time, or we could fly down, I'll show you around Texas, because Al had friends, and I think he actually had, uh, I don't know if it was family or just friends down there, I think he lived there for a little bit, but anyway, he said, you know, come down, we can take this little venture and we can make some extra money. I'm like, well, Al, what do you mean, uh, what, what do you have to do to make extra money, what, what, what are we doing? He says, well, well, I got this buddy who's gonna, he's got this truck. And uh, he wants, and I'm already going like, wait a minute, hold on a second. I said, what do you mean you've got a buddy who's got a truck? He's got speakers in it or something that fell out of it? What are you talking about? He says, no, 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 it's all legit. This guy's got a truck. He was just driving it uh, across the border. 
for, and I'd actually, at the time, I'd never been to Mexico before, so I thought, well, that'd be fun to go to Mexico. I said, well, so we're going into Mexico, driving a truck from Mexico in, in, in El Paso? He goes, yeah. I said, well, that's, these, they're going to pay us for that, right? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just got to make a couple calls. I said, well, are we transporting anything illegal? He goes, no, no, it's totally legit, totally legit. So I said, well, I, you know, I actually would feel, can, can you talk to the guy? I mean, it sounds a little sketchy to me. He says, no, look, I'll, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll call him. So he calls the guy, and he gets through, and he's talking to this guy on the phone. He says, I've got him on the phone right now. He's telling me the whole deal. And, uh, and as he's talking to him, I hear, like, he's on the phone, but I hear coming out of the phone these, like, little, like, pop. Go ahead, finish oh, up. Oh, oh, oh. No, no. I hear these little popping noises like this, and he goes, and I go, Al, what's going on? He goes, I think, I think he was shot. And then you, I, and I said, what are we talking about? And I took the phone from him, and there was a woman crying hysterically on the thing, on the other end of the phone. I didn't know what was going on, but he tries to convince me that his friend had actually been shot and killed. And needless to say, we did not go to, to Texas or anything. But uh, that, wow. that was the story. Uh, I, so I, I don't know this whole... I, I'm shocked that Robin didn't title this, You're Breaking Up, because I don't know. Because <laughs> he was literally... That's just so violent and uh, scary. It's true. Um, I mean, wait, wait. I'm literally... I'm breaking bad this week. It's, it's not a surprise. It's, it's a guy who actually ordered a hit is on the phone when there's rapid machine gun fire and uh, the well, drug lord portrayed by Javier Grajeda gets shot. Uh, I don't wow. know if it was uh, a we hit. We found out later on that he was shot by federales. Wow. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, I have a ton of questions. Uh, I'm sure you have a ton of questions. If you know who's lying, uh, go ahead and vote now. But if you need to know something to help make up your mind, go ahead and uh, enter it in the chat. How would I make up a name like Woody? Louise will pass it on. <laughs> Woody, Al Tambelli, Tambello. Tambello. That's like uh, Dr. Vinnie Gumbats. So, uh, <laughs> Tony, let me ask you. You found out it was pre-Columbian art object. Yes. When? Like, like this was when? No, it, this is. And did you think there might well, be yeah, cocaine we, inside? No, no. We thought we knew. No, we knew that the pre-Columbian art objects were like really expensive, and the the my primary concern, and so with Woody's concern, was that the truck would be on this side of it in America, not in not in Mexico. So if it was going to be in Texas. Well, it, I don't think the federal is going to cross the border and shoot us there, so we could just drive it. He could sell this, so we would get like we're going to get like a lot of money at the time. You know, we're talking about like in this in the late '70s. We're talking. I think we were going to get like eighteen hundred dollars a piece or something like that, which is a lot of money then. Sure, sure. And so, uh, and the, the plane fared down, and then you know, and that was it. And hotel rooms were going to be paid for if we needed to stop, and that was it. So. Wow. And you were going to drive from Vassar. This was not a... No, no, no. We had, we had all spring break. And he mm -hmm. said he could make, we could make some money to go down to El Paso to do this thing. And he suggested, he said, look, you know, if you want to make this whole adventure, we can actually have a road trip and drive down there and do this. Or we can fly down if you want to do that. If you don't want to take the time to drive across country. It was just a, a way to earn money during spring break. But yeah. the actual event was to drive this truck from Mexico, which seemed really sketchy to me. And, and in the process of trying to, you know, make sure this was legit... A guy apparently got shot and killed on the other end of the phone. This is the eternal dilemma of spring break. Pool parties or smuggling? Pool parties. <laughs> wow. Uh, Louise, are there any questions from the chat room for John or Tony? This is a very game. simple deal. Poor guy died and I fed <laughs> Raleigh's and art. I'm slightly concerned that what is really a very light-hearted show has just unearthed an unprosecuted murder. But it's okay because <laughs> Tony said it was the feds. So no, it was Mex it was the, he was killed in Mexico. So it doesn't so it was matter. Completely in whatever. their jurisdiction. Whatever. And he that was the that's I mean, you steal that art from that country, they'll shoot you. Well, a lot of people oh. want to know. Can you describe the art? <coughs> can I describe? Did you I get, mean, to, well, did you get I mean, to see it? What is we, it? Yes. Well, describe like describe the art. <laughs> 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 well, actually, the artist, you know, Bellaro, he does a lot of. <laughs> he, no, he does a lot of he does a lot of representation. I have a They're basically question. these stone heads. And you know, faces very similar to what you find on Easter like Island. Like gargoyles. No, not gargoyles. Faces, <laughs> basically <laughs> faces. Little, little, little men like you know, like uh, gods. Little tiny, almost look like gingerbread men. What? Totems. Gingerbread men. I, I, Totems. Is that what they call? I don't know. That's In what I sentence. Right. No, but wow. that's what they're mostly stone. Can I? Well, yeah, well, John, you had a question. Yeah, question. Yeah, I, sure. How did you even see the art if you never got down? When we were at Woody's yeah. house and and we're on the phone, she showed us a book of the kind of stuff that this guy we were going to be bringing back. So, you know, That's you can get a pre, you know, we were in college. It's could not going to gonna be heroin. It's going to be these vases. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. Any other questions from the um, chat room? Go ahead and vote if you've already decided who's lying. John, did the guy, you said he died. Did you know if he died? I, 
to this day, I don't know if they died. I heard, we heard gunfire or this pop sound, but I, the only person I actually talked to was this woman who was crying hysterically and saying, like, my God, I think they, they well, shot. What did you guys do? Did either of you call the police? Or <coughs> what were we going to do? We're in, I was in New Paul's. This was taking you place in Mexico. <laughs> what were we going to say? Think some guy got no, shot I, stealing I, artwork I, in Mexico? It's not one of my proudest moments, but I had no, I, I had no idea. I had no idea. No, I had no idea who I, this guy was, what this deal was. This was like supposedly some friend of Al's. And, you know, I, heard a, I heard him, you know, ah, sound. <laughs> so I found out later on that he was definitely dead. But I don't know what, I mean, not that I've been around a lot of people who've been shot, but clearly whatever sound this guy was making was not good. Not healthy. Oh, wow, I'm just getting a message. Any stories told here may be fictitious, so uh, the Rue Live can't be held liable for any murders. Uh, wow, this is a crazy story. Any other questions uh, from the oh chat room? God, no, it's a complete 100% vote. Wow. Uh, <laughs> complete 100%. I, 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 uh, I'll tell you who I think is lying, and I don't know if I agree with the, uh, with the audience, but I'm picking this person. Uh, I think that person is lying. Uh, uh, let's find out who you think the liar is. Yeah? Yeah. 100% of you, I love it when it's the landslide victory, think that the winner, or the liar, sorry, oh. is Tony. Ooh, I agree with you. That's 101%, I think, but I don't, I'm not good with that kind of math. Uh, I thought the whole uh, knowing what the art looked like was a bit uh, much. Uh, <laughs> Kinda, <laughs> though pre-Columbian was sort of Woody a nice touch. Was a bit much. <laughs> I like Woody. I like going on a road illegal road trip with a guy named Woody. Uh, will the real liar, liar please dramatically raise their hand with some sort of a panache? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Woody's real. Oh, I was a liar. Oh. I was a liar. Wow. Woody, wow. the liar. Wow. Congratulations. Right nice up. win. I gotta say that. hundred percent! Now you know I'm not ever gonna be able to live this down. <laughs> One hundred percent! I Need took my life Mexico. back from it. What? Neither is the guy in Mexico gonna live. Uh, this is uh, the first time I've been wrong in the last eight. Well, you know what? We have a tie game so far, which means it's all gonna come down to the ever exciting lightning round. Oh no. The lightning round works like this. Oh, no uh, more of those goofy stories? No, no more. Oh, we get oh, lightning. Yeah, we good get stories. goofy tidbits now. It's fantastic. Uh, they and I told the story exactly the way it happened. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I did I didn't with even the head in my head. Oh, I didn't even embellish it. Uh, and you get a hundred percent. A hundred percent. Your life is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! These people high watching your show. Uh, uh, whether you are or not, let me explain how the lightning round works. They have sent me some uh, facts and supposed facts about themselves. Uh, I have <laughs> chosen some at random and typed them up onto these cards. And we're going to start with, uh, Tony, you guessing uh, John. So, John, you are going to read these one at a time uh, to Tony. And then, like lightning, <coughs> you will answer true or lie. I'll write down your answers. Whoa, whoa, these, we'll my, these are mine? No, these are his that oh. he's going to say. True. You know or, what happened to you. Oh, right. Okay. True yeah, okay. or lie. Uh, true or lie after what he says. And like lightning. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I have a half sister who I have true. actually never met. Uh, I've been bitten by a dog four times. False. I had Rocky Mountain spotted fever. False. I had to get completely naked in front of Mary Tyler Moore and Lynn Redgrave in a play. True. <laughs> uh, I'm actually colorblind. True. All right. We will find out how you did in a moment. Uh, now, uh, John, it is your turn to guess at Tony's. Please uh, answer like lightning. True or lie? I can predict earthquakes. <laughs> <laughs> no. False. I played shortstop for the New York Yankee AAA farm team in Columbus. No. <laughs> my dog actually ate my homework one time. That's true. <laughs> I lose my balance when emergency vehicles with loud sirens pass me on the street. That's, <laughs> that's actually true. <laughs> I've seen it happen. <laughs> I've saved the lives of two people. True. All right. Uh, let us recap, shall we? Uh, <laughs> Tony said uh, that he can predict earthquakes. Uh, you said it was false. He says it's true. But that's <laughs> bullshit! <laughs> I, 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 where, where, where 
what is that? What are you? What, yeah, what are you? He's what a liar. Is the one? We've that. He's now wait a, a minute. I, I I I was struggling with whether or not to put this down. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't think I would include well, it? Well, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> what I, happens? I can. Can I vote on what you put down? No. Well, like not. the earthquake that happened today. When when you would, Robin was telling me about the earthquake today. Yesterday I was. Uh, a, yeah, yesterday I was with a friend of mine. Her name is Danny. We had, we we had come from some uh, Woody. meeting. No, it wasn't Woody. <laughs> and I, you know, there are people who know me know that when I get this feeling, either in my body, except in my, if I get it in my stomach, it's within a hundred miles of wherever I am. <laughs> and so this is, and the earthquake happens within 36 hours, and it's always over a 4.5. So <clears throat> what happened was, I said to her. I said, wow, I just got that feeling. And the feeling is like as if I'm having an earthquake. I'm in, in an earthquake. I said, and the, f the feeling is like right above my stomach. I said, so it could be close. And so she was like, well, okay. And I said, but there's nothing you can do about it. You can't stop it. I can't pinpoint it exactly. And so <clears throat> she said, okay, fine. So within 36 hours, there was an earthquake in San Diego, uh, 5.1. Uh, and, and, and then, then a siren drove by and, then one and you time, fell right over. The reason why, I, <laughs> but you can look this up. The reason why I know this is this accurate is I was in Toronto once shooting a movie, and I'm in the hotel room, and all of a sudden I got these vibrations in my stomach, and I said, well, it can't be, this, this can't be accurate. I said, because I'm in Toronto. They don't have any earthquakes. And you can look it up. Uh, in about 40 miles north of the town of Scarborough, the next day they had a 4.2 earthquake. Here's the thing: he believes it, so I gotta say it is true. Oh. You didn't get that one right. <laughs> I got uh, seven people. He looking. said he played shortstop for the New York Yankees AAA farm team. You said that was a lie. It is indeed a lie. Oh, it was uh, true. What do you, oh, I'm no. Uh, he said his dog actually ate his homework. Uh, you said that was true. No, that actually was a lie. So you've still uh, only got Never one point so far. He said he lost his balance when a siren passes by, and for a guy who's played cops, it's kind of not equilibrium. a good no, equilibrium. skill to have, but that is true, so you get two points, uh, and he has saved the lives of two people, so that's three points total for you there. Uh, let's see how he did. It is now five oh, to God, two. Oh, God, please, I hope I did. Oh, shit. Let's have a look. Uh, he says he has a half-sister he never met. You said it was true before he was done with the sentence, and that is false. Uh, <laughs> He said he'd been bitten by a dog four times. You correctly guessed that that's a lie, so you get a point for that one. Uh, he said he had Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. You said that was a lie, and I hope you're over it. It is true. I he did. did. You really did. I did, it. yes. Uh, and uh, much uh, to the delight of Mary Tyler Moore and Lynn Redgrave, John did regularly take off all his clothes in front of them, eight times a week anyway. Uh, and he's not colorblind, so he does win by 1.54. Oh. Oh. Very close game and a good game. Oh. Congratulations, John Penny. Uh, a colorblind. <laughs> that is great. Uh, Tony, uh, just for playing, you're still going to get one chance for you uh, and the Thank Sunshine Kids to win $42 million. You, John get five chances at $42 million uh, for you and Doctors Without Borders. And I want to thank you both for playing. I think it was a really fun, good game. Let's, that was uh, a thank... bit of a nail biter. Yeah, it was. It was a close one. Louise Rowe, how about Louise doing a great job in the chat room as always. Follow her at Louise Rowe on the Twitter. She's got great funny stuff and great fashion tips, none of which I've taken yet, but I probably should. Uh, thanks again to John Tenney and Tony Dennison for coming down here and playing so well and having such a good time. They both were great. 100 percent. It had to be 100 yeah, percent. I take a lot of, <laughs> lot of pride in that, actually. Oh, my God. <laughs> and the way you told the story wasn't even that good. Yeah, not just a majority, but everybody. I want to uh, know about the last minute reversal. Though. That was very interesting. It was great. Something uh, happened. That, happened. And that's what happens uh, when you play live and when you stream live oh from a God. fine place like theroomlive.com. I want to thank everybody here. Robin Roseanne, Michael Davis, Matt Edwards, and everybody else who makes this a possibility. Please come back to theroomlive.com, not just for us on Tuesdays, but for the cooking shows, for the music shows, for the comedy shows, for the authors. There's a lot of great stuff going on I here. cook come back. Tony's going to cook it up in here. Uh, thanks I'm very much for watching. Up. And please, The Closer, TNT. It's a great show. They're both great on it. Uh, good night. Thanks very much for watching Celebrity Live. Thanks. Have a good time.